In this short video, we're going to look at a test for absolute convergence called the ratio test. And as the name suggests, the ratio test is based on the limit of the ratio of consecutive terms in a series. So the idea is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a n plus 1 over a n. And we're going to assume that limit exists and it's some finite number r, but r can't equal 1. And we're going to see if r equals 1, uh, this test cannot be used or no conclusion can be made from the test when r equals 1. So let's start with a case where r is less than 1. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means, uh, well, I'm going to first take a value between r and 1, right? So r is less than 1, so I'm going to take a point or a number which is halfway between r and 1, and I'm going to call that r hat. And I'm going to let epsilon be the difference between r hat and r. So remember, r is smaller than r hat, and r hat is smaller than 1. And so this is a positive number epsilon. So from the definition of the limit, that means that uh, we have a positive integer m, such that whenever our index n is greater or equal to m, then uh, the difference between our sequence term and the limit value has to be less than epsilon. Well, if I replace epsilon with r hat minus r, I can rewrite that as saying that the difference between our ratio, or the absolute value of the ratio, and the limit value has got to be between these two numbers. And I'm only going to focus for now on this side, because if I add r, to each side of that inequality, I can see that the ratio of the absolute values of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is going to be less than r hat. And remember, r hat is also less than 1. So that would mean that a sub n plus 1 is less than r hat a sub n. And in turn, a sub n plus 2 must also be less than r hat times the absolute value of a sub n plus 1. But now I can chain these together. a sub n plus 1, the absolute value of that, is less than r hat times the absolute value of a sub n. So that means that a sub n plus 2, or the absolute value of a sub n plus 2, is less than r hat squared times a sub n. And I can continue this with a sub n plus 3. The absolute value of a sub n plus 3 must be less than r hat times the absolute value of a sub n plus 2. But we just saw that the absolute value of a sub n plus 2 is less than r hat squared times the absolute value of a n. And so it follows that the absolute value of a sub n plus 3 is less than or equal to r hat cubed times the absolute value of a sub n. And so now there's a clear pattern that in general, the absolute value of a sub n plus k it's going to be less than or equal to r hat to the power of k times the absolute value of a sub n. So in the tail of our sequence, we can have this comparison. So this is, you know, true when n is greater than or equal to m. We have this comparison. But if I look at the right hand side, those would be the terms of a convergent geometric series. So I could say from the comparison test that the tail 
of my series is convergent. And that's all you need. If the tail is convergent, then the whole series is just some partial sum, some finite number plus the tail. Of course, this is a finite number. This is convergent to some finite number. So the whole thing converges to a finite number. So if r is less than one, then we would have absolute convergence of the series. Well, what if r is greater than one? Well, the analysis is essentially the same. So I'm not gonna go through all of the details. We're still gonna have a different definition though for epsilon because now r is greater than one. So my r hat value uh, is less than r. So to make epsilon positive, I have to define it as r minus r hat. But otherwise, I get to the same inequality, but now what I'm interested in is the left-hand part of the inequality. If I add r to both sides there, I get that the absolute value of a sub n plus one over the absolute value of a sub n is greater than r hat. And remember, r hat in turn is greater than one. So I can go through the same type of analysis that we did before, but now the inequality is greater than. And we find that in general now, our terms after capital M satisfy this inequality, which means that now we have a divergent geometric series. The terms are larger than the terms of a divergent geometric series. Uh, so that means the tail is divergent. And if the tail is divergent, then the whole series is divergent. So in summary, the ratio test really has three parts. The first part is where that limit value is less than one. And I switched from R to L here because that's what they use in the book is the L. So then the series is absolutely convergent. If we have the limit of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms is some finite number less than one. On the other hand, if that is some number which is greater than one or it's infinity, then the series is divergent. But if that limit equals one, no conclusion can be made from the ratio test. So let's look at some examples. Our first example, we have an n factorial and the ratio test is very popular among students. They use it inappropriately uh, too many times, but it is absolutely appropriate and the best test to use usually when you have n factorial in the terms of the sequence. So we're gonna use the ratio test uh, I'm gonna have to take a sub n plus one over a sub n. I don't need absolute value signs because all of these terms are already positive. So I gotta do some algebra here. Uh, fortunately, uh, remember n plus one factorial can be written as n plus one times n factorial. Three to the power of n plus one can be written as three to the power of n times three. I went ahead and multiplied out the n plus one squared. And I see that a lot of my uh, factors are gonna divide to make one. And so I'll be left with three times a quadratic polynomial over a cubic polynomial. And even before calculus in algebra, we learned that as n goes to infinity, that is going to go to zero. And so by the ratio test, zero is less than one. We can conclude that the series is convergent. So a couple of remarks here. Uh, again, this series has positive terms. So I don't say it's absolutely convergent because when you have positive terms, absolutely convergent is the same as convergent. And then the second remark is, you know, here in the ratio test, a zero is a perfectly acceptable limit value, it's one that is the problem limit value. But the limit comparison test, remember we can't have 
the limit be zero. Or we, if the limit is zero, we simply can't use the limit comparison test. We might need to use something else, maybe the ratio test. In our second example, I have another factorial, and then I have 100 raised to the power of n. Uh, and so we can use the ratio test here because we have a factorial. It makes it quite simple. Uh, so again, I work it out, I write n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. 100 raised to the power of n plus 1 is 100 times 100 to the power of n. And that simplifies to n plus 1 over 100, which clearly goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So uh, this series is divergent by the ratio test. I probably could have used the uh, test for divergence here, but because I have that factorial, it makes calculating the limit uh, cumbersome. But if I have the ratio of the limit, it, much, it is much easier, or the limit of the ratios, I'm sorry. All right, in our last example, we're given a recursively defined sequence, and we're going to add up the terms of those sequence in an infinite series. And we'd like to know if that series is convergent or divergent. So again, I don't need to worry about um, absolute values. Uh, I start with a positive initial value, and then I'm going to have a multiplier, which is always positive to get to the next term. So, um, you know, the, the question is, you know, is this going to be convergent or divergent? Well, in this case, it's so simple because my ratio can be obtained by just looking at the recursion formula. I'll just divide both sides by uh, a sub n, and I get this multiplier, 3n plus 5, over 4n minus 3. And as n goes to infinity, that goes to 3 fourths, which is less than 1. So the series is convergent by the ratio test. So there's another test for absolute convergence called the root test, and we'll do that in the next video.